Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cape Chamber TV. It's a pilot episode of a TV show that's done for business, by business. The Cape Chamber of Commerce has a membership base of 3,000 businesses. We know that 40% of our members are exporters. And we know that 60% of our exporters are exporting into Africa or intend to do so in the next 12 months. It's important for business to start looking at the African continent because we understand that there's a huge potential for growth and expansion. The important question is how do we mitigate our risks? Last year, the Cape Chamber launched our Doing Business in Africa conference, and we're very keen to welcome back FNB as our key partner and sponsor at this event. With us today to tell us more about doing business in Africa, we have the head of global commercial banking at FNB, Mr. Stefan Klaassen. Welcome, Stefan. Thank you, Viola. What are some of the considerations businesses should be taking into account when they expand into Africa? Firstly, we're very fortunate to live in a generation that's very aggressive about growth. Uh, people are looking out there into the rest of the world and they want to expand their businesses. So as South Africans, we were not always like that. So this generation says, let me look at the new growth opportunity. And, and Africa creates that opportunity for us. Now we often talk about South Africa and the rest of Africa as if we're not part of it. But the great thing is we are part of it. So if your business is successful in Africa, or in South Africa firstly, then you've got every reason to look across the border into the rest of Africa and go into Namibia and Botswana and all of those countries and expand your business. Then secondly, I think eight of the top growth economies in the world sits now in Africa. So if it's so close, if it's our continent, why not go there? We should actually be thinking about it like we're thinking about expanding into Northwest or the Eastern Cape. Why not Botswana, Zambia, Tanzania, etc. It's the place for us as Africans to go to. Are there any specific trends you're seeing in terms of industry movement into Africa at this time? It's interesting if you if you look at it almost as a lifestyle or a, or a way of doing business thing, the first people that went into Africa were the mines. Obviously resources, they had to find the resources of coal and diamonds and gold. And then when the guys got out of the mines, they were thirsty. So S.A.B. Miller went after them and <laughs> gave them some beer. And then they wanted to watch TV, so MTN, or an Mnet rather, went and gave them TV. And then they needed to phone home, so MTN went and gave them telephones. And then they needed to send money, so the banks followed. So there's almost a trend of who goes first, who goes second. The good thing for all of us is that you have clients and suppliers that are right now going into Africa. So every industry has a potential opportunity in Africa. Follow your clients in Africa or follow your suppliers in Africa. But there's more than enough opportunity for all of us because Africa operates very much like any other emerging market and they need all the industries that we have in the Western Cape and in South Africa. Thanks Stefan. After the break we'll be talking more about the risks involved in doing business in Africa. Please stay with us. Welcome back. I'm excited about this discussion and I know we'll delve into a lot more detail at the actual conference. What everyone seems to be talking about at the moment, you know, from one side of their mouth they're talking about the opportunities and the other side of the mouth they're talking about the risks involved. What are some of the risks involved in expansion into Africa? The first risk for any business expanding there is to find the right partner. And uh, it's like any other emerging market. There are opportunists on the other side who see you coming. So you've got to be careful and select the right partner. And one of the best ways to do that is to put your own man or woman on the ground and let them open a little office there, walk the streets, go to the local uh, hangout places and just start get a feel of the business there and, and the other local rumors on the street. And then use them to help you find the right partner. Part two is get a few good advisors that can advise you. And, and that can be your accountant, a local law firm, a good bank that, that can advise you on that. Otherwise, you could end up with the wrong legal structure or the wrong financing structure. And again, you're then stuck for quite a long time. A risk one has to mention is corruption. And it's not unique to Africa. It's in any other emerging market and developed market even in the world. The risk is that you start engaging in that. And then you fall into a trap that you forever have to keep on engaging. Stefan, why is FNB going to partner with the Cape Chamber on the Doing Business in Africa conference? Firstly, we think that Africa's got lots of potential, but in the Cape there are so many businesses that are the vehicles for investors into Africa. Um, if you look at the industries in the Western Cape, 
financial services is a great industry. The retail sector, um, there's lots of service industries. Cape Town is now one of the world's fastest growing cities for call centers. So Cape Town has got industries that lends itself to expansion into Africa. So we want to talk to those industries and assist them to go into Africa and do business with them in Africa. They're already very successful here. The world is saying that Cape Town is the place to come and invest in, in South Africa. But let's use that vehicle to go into Africa. And let's exchange ideas and come up with new ideas. Um, the retailers have shown us all how to do that. Shop by checkers and, and pick and pay have been very successful in Africa. So it's almost that like Cape Town is a better platform for people to go into Africa than Johannesburg or many other places in South Africa. So that's why we're excited about the conference and want to talk to people about that. You clearly understand the territory and the terrain. What's interesting for us now is, what are FNB's long-term and medium-term goals for Africa? I think it's like any um, market. You've got, to, you've got to carve Africa into smaller pieces. Africa is not just one globular situation. You've got to have smaller pieces. So we see a lot of growth in Southern Africa firstly, and that's why we're already quite big in Southern Africa. East Africa has got select players that we're really excited about. Some are overbanked, if I can come from a banking angle, and some are really great opportunities, like Tanzania for us is, is a great opportunity. And then West Africa is like this undiscovered gem. Although everyone talks about Nigeria, not that many have been that successful there. So we've chosen specific pockets in Africa that we think we can be successful in. In general, every business should do that. Choose the market that fits you and go into that part of Africa. It, it is so ready for expansion and, and they're so eager to find good new investors that I think people will find it easier than what they think to expand into Africa. It's clear that smart business owners are going to be looking at Africa with renewed view and looking at its potential. We're very excited about introducing our mediation clause which is available on the Chamber's website. It's a clause that you can use in your contracts as you manage your expansion the clause that protects you as a business owner when it comes to entering contractual agreements with other countries, with other suppliers, with potential customers. Please feel free to go to the Cape Chambers website to find more details about our Doing Business in Africa conference which takes place on the 23rd and 24th of July.